Hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Let's Try Treasure Adventure World. It's a 2D side-scrolling Metroidvania made by Robit Studios. It's a three-person team, and they've done a pretty good job with this. I guess the best game I could compare this to in recent memory is the Tesla Grad game I did a review of a little bit ago, where it's, you know, nice and almost childish in style, or at least, you know, appealing to the childlike aesthetic. But at the same time, I think this one is a little less merciless and a little bit more like, you know, bright and happy and sunny and, you know, all that sort of thing, whereas Tesla Grad was a lot darker and a lot tougher and the puzzles were a lot more brutal. Overall, it still does fit the general, you know, traditional puzzle platformer style, though to me it almost seems like like a 2D side-scrolling version of an old-style Zelda game, or I guess it also has a lot of the, like, it'll do, if you know that game. It has a lot of that overall, like, visual charm, and the personalities of the characters seem kind of similar. So, Treasure Adventure World is not exactly unique. It's actually a creative reimagining by the team of their original game, which was called Treasure Adventure Game. Uh, not exactly that great of an extrapolation on the title, and honestly, I think they could have done a little bit better there, but you know what, when it comes down to it, it's simple and you know exactly what you're getting into. So Treasure Adventure World and Treasure Adventure Game are very similar in both story and mechanics, but Treasure Adventure Game was kind of the retro style and this one is nice and bright and hand painted, which I love. Now, before I really get into it, I will make note that this game is still in development with no set release date. I'm not even sure how far they are into the whole development process, but right now they've got a free demo available that you can download from their site. And it's got the intro tutorial area that also gives kind of a rundown of some of the basic plot and like how to play, as well as the first island that you go to, because the game mostly involves sailing from island to island on a, I guess a collapsible boat. It turns into a pixel and you can pull it out whenever you hop and water, which is actually kind of convenient and I hope will show up in certain puzzles because there are points in, like, I went into a sewer and I actually fell into the water and instead of, you know, drowning or anything like that, suddenly my boat popped out and I was on the boat, which is awesome. But, so if the things seem a little wiggly or, like, incomplete because they're still working on it, so be gracious and understanding because the game just isn't done yet. So, as far as gameplay goes, the basics of it are run, jump, attack. It's very simple. It doesn't have that much that I've run into yet that's truly unique, but what it does do is pretty darn good. One nice little addition is that you have a hook hand that lets you hold onto like certain surfaces as well as edges, so you can climb up like rings and stuff on the walls, as well as you, if you hit the edge of a platform, you can hold onto it, so you don't have to worry about timing your jumps that much. And in a typical Metroidvania style, you find upgrades and utility items scattered all over the place. So in the second level, you pick up some boots for higher jumping, a hook, well, more of an upgrade for your hook that lets you throw it like a boomerang, which is useful for dispatching enemies, and I have yet to actually use it for anything else. I assume it will be used for grabbing collectibles that are a fair distance away, but as it stands, it's mostly just a combat upgrade in the demo. You also get a shovel, which you get it in the first island as part of plot stuff, and then you get it in the second island as part of like a puzzle solving thing, and I'm not sure if you either lose the shovel in between there and during the plot, or if they'll actually give you the shovel in the first island and not have it be something you get on the second island. But as it stands, the shovel is actually kind of useful because there are certain points where you have to dig down. It's not exactly necessary, but it lets them gate things until you get the shovel, and then you can go back and do certain content that you weren't able to do before. And some of the unique little places that you go to because of this are kind of cool. I mentioned the sewer area earlier. Not at all necessary, I believe, but they mentioned that the starting town you grew up in presumably is powered by this big crystal. You go down in the sewer, you see the big crystal, and it's like, oh, okay. And I think you also get some, like, treasure and stuff. I don't think you got anything meaningful in there, but it was still just kind of a neat little exploration thing. That's one of this game really promotes exploration, and it truly is linear, you know, you need to get X item to let you get to X place, but there are a bunch of side areas that you don't need to go to, but if you do, they're kind of neat to look at and neat to find things in. Most of the puzzles in the game really just involve pushing blocks and flipping switches and, you know, sometimes avoiding traps or monsters. Or you can even use certain monsters to push down levers or switches, as well as using them for stepping stones, which is kind of neat. And I haven't run into a whole lot of games that use that. Most games, you know, you run into the enemy, you take damage. In this one, most of the enemies you run into are either basic spiders, which you run into them, you take damage, or these cool little, like, walking robot things that will blow up after a certain amount of time, but you can throw them to flip switches 
switches, or you can stand on them as a roving platform that you can lure to certain areas. And there's one particularly well done, actually a couple well done puzzles where you have to lead them around either as the bird or the main character who I believe is unnamed, but you have to lead them to certain places so you can get up higher, which is kind of neat. Now, I mentioned the bird. The bird is actually one of the puzzle platformer twists, because every puzzle platformer has to have a couple of twists. In this case, it's the bird, which you will find certain platforms every once in a while, and if you land on it, you can press a button, and you will have access to the bird, and you can fly around with him and solve puzzles that way, which kind of gates content, so there are certain things that you can only do with the bird, and also lets them be a little bit more creative with their level design, which I thought was kind of a neat idea, and it really incorporates the sidekick character, even though he does all the talking, it incorporates him into the actual puzzle solving element, which I thought was a very nice touch. The other really unique thing that they have going for them that I haven't really seen a whole lot of other games do, at least in the puzzle platforming section of things, is the game uses a day-night cycle, so certain doors will be closed on certain times of the day, and for the most part all you have to do is go find a bed to go to sleep, and suddenly the door will be open, and you can get through and continue on your way. But for the most part it also has this very nice visual adjustment, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Now, one other kind of unique thing that they've got going for them, and it's not truly unique, but I haven't seen a whole lot of Metroidvanias use it, is that there are like journals and pages and inscriptions that you can read. They will give you a hint on what you're supposed to do. So there's one puzzle where you're supposed to pull levers 1, 2, 3, 5, 3, 1 to get through a chimney. And this goes back to the whole exploration thing where you go down the chimney and there's a treasure chest there and it just has a bunch of money in it, which is not at all crucial to the actual gameplay. You could go farm monsters for money if you've truly felt like it, but it's still kind of a neat little, not quite Easter egg, but still reward for deviating a little bit and looking at things and paying attention. And as a player, I felt truly rewarded for keeping my ear to the ground and actually looking at the surroundings instead of just trying to speed through the puzzles as fast as I possibly could. Now, as far as the levels go, they can be a little simple. Honestly, it's a lot of switches. It's a lot of getting from point A to point B, flipping switch to open X door to let you flip another switch to get through another door. And it's just a series of gating mechanisms until you can finally get to whatever reward chamber or exit door or something. I finally got to the end of the first dungeon, went through the door, and then the demo ended. So I was kind of disappointed because I was hoping there'd be, you know, some mystical treasure that I was looking for because it keeps hinting about these artifact things that you're trying to find and as far as I can tell actually I, I can't tell I have no idea what's in there and honestly that kind of was a neat touch to the demo but I wish there's like you know a glowing light or some hint at the reward beyond as opposed to just you went through the door congratulations buy our game and maybe I'm being a bit cynical but still it would have been nice to see the MacGuffin that I'm looking for now the level design can be a bit vague or confusing so there's an amount of exploration and discovery that you have to do just kind of understand what you're trying to do there are two specific specific parts that I got very, very stuck. One was you're supposed to go get a shovel to unearth some turnips so the mayor will give you a crystal to power the boat so you can leave the island. Pretty simple, except for the shovel is inside a house, and you find out that you can jump in front of the door in the house to unlock the chimney. Okay, also simple, you jump a bunch of times, chimney unlocks, you go up there, hop down the chimney, and then you go inside the house and there's nothing there. You find a list and it says, you know, fix hole in the floor partially and a couple other things. It was like a to-do list. And so obviously there's a hole in the floor somewhere, but if you look around at the floor, there's no visual distinction that, you know, where the hole is. So I actually ended up spending a good 20 minutes just hopping up and down and like leaving and looking and trying to ask the NPC who's supposed to be tending the house and he just kept trying to sell me a hat so I, I spent a lot of time just being confused and eventually I was just like you know what screw it I'll just mess around crawling around on the floor and see if I can get it turns out you can crawl underneath the dining room table and you just instantly fall through the floor there's no indication that, that part of the floor was damaged in any way shape or form it's just an invisible wall that you can suddenly fall through and I think from a design standpoint it would have been much better if they showed the little bit of damage or wear and tear or repair work. What would normally look like if you would repair the floor? And I think that would have been a much more clear way of showing this is the part of the floor you're supposed to go through, because it really does kind of suck when you're stuck maybe 20 minutes into the game looking for a bloody shovel. The other part I got stuck on was there is a purple gear that you have to break. Now, normally to get the, the gears to activate, you have an enemy step on a switch, and switch goes down, gear turns, and like a platform moves or something drops, whatever. 
Well, this purple gear has minuscule little cracks on it that I didn't notice, and I ended up spending, you know, another 20-30 minutes just running around up and down the level looking for this missing switch. And a lot of both of these problems is my fault for just not being adventurous enough or observant enough, but I think at the same time a slight amount of like extra design work would have gone a long way at making it a lot clearer and understandable, because if, say, there was a chunk missing out of the purple gear, it would have been a lot more obvious that it was broken as opposed to just faint little cracks. Sometimes, uh, as far as the level design goes, you can get stuck. More often than not, it's you push a stone block one direction, stuck in a corner where you can no longer push it out, and since you can't pull things, you have to reset the level. Generally, it doesn't set you back all the way, but usually you have to redo, you know, three to five minutes of content, which isn't bad, and honestly is kind of endemic to the puzzle platformer genre, but in games like Braid, where you can actually go back in time, it felt a lot smoother and you could reverse your mistakes a lot faster instead of being in trouble. I'm not sure how a good solution would be apart from going back in time, but points where it does get stuck, it was really annoying to have to go back and retrace all my steps and redo all the things just so I could push the block to the right instead of the left and not have this problem again. Enough with the gameplay. Let's talk about the visuals, because one of the biggest draws I have for this game is just how gorgeous it is. Characters are adorable, the environments are nice and hand-painted, everything is just very well done and screams a lot of work was put into all of these things and a lot of thought. And one of the things that really drew me into it was that banners and chandeliers would just move slightly, you know, the grasses, the turnips. It was just kind of this nice little side animation outside of the characters that just gave the world a little bit extra vibrance and lifelike quality. One of the other things that really stood out to me was the general character design. All of the characters, except for the parrot, which is very well done in its own right, all of the characters, the human ones, stand out as unique people. There are two boys sitting inside a house playing games. They fit the bill perfectly. You know, one is idly flipping channels and the other is playing Game Boy, presumably. And they both look like couch potatoes, but not the gross, disgusting kind, but they fit the general adorable feel, even if they were lazy layabouts. Enough about them, the main character herself is perfect. I'm not really sure why she has a hook hand, and honestly I feel kind of bad for her in that case, because what presumably like 12, 14 year old is missing a whole hand and has a boomerang hook for a hand. Then again, if you're a 12 year old with a boomerang pirate hook for a hand, things would probably still be pretty awesome. Overall, her face, her movement is just perfect and adorable, and I love it. One other thing that I also noticed was that I would mentioned this earlier, the nighttime lighting. So since the game has day-night cycles, the outside areas will be lit depending on whether or not it's day or night. And there will be light sources and they will, you know, cast light on things. And just the overall color palette and the way things are lit is equally perfect and very distinct. I don't see a whole lot of games with that kind of visual variation depending on what time of the day it is. And it's cool. I like it. I guess the last two things on the list, they're a little bit more minor, but the backgrounds are really nice, you know, you can see other islands in the back when you're in caves. There's like this kind of shifting, dusty feel to it, and it's really neat. As well as one thing the game kind of has is you're going around on a boat, so the water animations are particularly appropriate for the scenery. Water animations are hard, I've tried it before and it's not exactly the easiest thing to do, and they pulled it off nice and well done, because it doesn't look particularly realistic, but it still has that nice watery movement to it and I actually spent, you know, a good 30 seconds just looking at it, trying to figure out how they did it so simply and so solidly. Now, the last thing on my huge laundry list of things to talk about whenever I review a game is the audio. In this case, the music is good, but not perfect. The problem is the music is very charming and catchy, but especially if you get stuck, you're going to be listening to the exact same maybe one minute loop. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh here, but when you're spending 20 minutes staring at something, hearing the same tune over and over and over again can get really trying. And as much as I like the music, by the end of it, I actually turned it off just so I could focus on what I was doing and not get annoyed. On the other side of thing, the sound effects are perfect. I really don't have much to say on that matter because they, they're just so appropriate. Oh, before I forget, the controls. The game is programmed to allow for keyboard play or controller play, but if you want to play on the controller, you actually have to set them manually yourself. So it took a little bit of fiddling on my part to figure that out. Before I even figured out that I could, I was playing on the keyboard and it just didn't feel nearly as tight as far as the controls were, jumping was a little bit harder. I found timing my attacks was kind of a pain in the ass, and maybe that's just personal experience and skill with the matter, but when it came down to it, the game feels much better with a controller. So if you want to play this game, make sure you have a controller on hand, because it will be a lot more fun. So, I guess in closing, this one isn't strikingly unique, but its strong suit is its overall polish, visuals, and charm. 
because a lot of games are trying for the cartoony feel, but this is the first one that truly drew me in as far as the visuals went. Tesla Grad was close, but this one I really wanted to know the characters and understand them. I liked looking at them too, which was fun. The one major issue that I really did bring up was getting stuck was not fun. It, as with most puzzle platformers, when you're stuck, you spend your entire time just beating your head against the wall. And I think just a little bit of tweaking on their part could make things a lot easier to understand without making them too easy. Otherwise, I had a lot of fun with this game. Uh, like I said, unlike other puzzle platformers, I was really drawn in by this one. And I really want to see this game in completion and would love to do, uh, you know, another re review of it when it's, you know, further completed or at release, as well as possibly a Let's Play of it. I'm not entirely sure just because my hesitation with puzzle platformers, but it's got enough writing and plot that it could be cool. And the puzzles didn't feel like head bashers enough that I wouldn't be able to do a Let's Play of it. And I guess in summation, if you really like puzzle platformers, I think Treasure Adventure World would be a great addition to your library, as well as if you like general Metroidvanias or just cute games, because I don't think this one's going to be extremely hard, but it's going to be challenging enough that you're not going to be bored by it. And when it comes down to it, it's fun, it's pretty, it's got decent music, and interesting puzzles. If you're looking for a good puzzle platformer, I'd say go for this one. So I'm really looking forward to this game. And I hope you guys are too, because they've done a great job with it, and I can only assume they're going to do even better with the end result. Just as a reminder, if you do want to try this game out, it's in a free open demo right now that you can download from their website. It's also been greenlit, so if you're a Steam aficionado, you can pick it up there at its release. They've also got a pre-order set up, which I assume will come with the Steam key whenever it's released on Steam. So if you want to pre-order it for a slight discount, go there now. And with that, those are my overall impressions of Treasure Adventure World. Good game, and I'd recommend it. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next review. Or Let's Play if you watch my other content. Thank you.